right here. Mm-hmm. Even right there, there's like little pitch bend or a little kind of flick that happens. And it's a really cool sound that a lot of contemporary singers will use. Hey, welcome back to another episode of our vocal analysis series. My name is Ivan. I'm a voice teacher based in Australia who works with students all around the world. And on this show, I want to make learning how to sing as simple as possible. And what we're doing here today is we're breaking down some of your favorite singers and breaking down into some of the nuances, some of the details that you can then apply to your own singing. So I'll be you know, sharing some of my key learnings along with some exercises for you to try. And so if this is up your lane, if improving your voice is something you want to do, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification so you can get access to these episodes every Thursday or Friday, depending on where you're joining us from. If you're interested in really improving your voice, check out some of the links down below. I've got ways to work with me and some courses that might actually help you as well. So who are we studying today? Today, we are studying a singer called Grant Perez. Now, I was introduced to Grant by one of my students and I thought this was a really cool one to study because it is a classic, you know, hopelessly devoted to you from Greece. But I love how Grant has done this. It's this beautiful acoustic cover and it's also sung in a way that's quite contemporary. And so hopefully I can share some tips on that for you. So let's dive straight into the very, very first bit. The intro starts like this. So over here, even right here on this little intro, there's a couple of things we can study. One of the things you can already pick up here, and this is something I notice a lot of contemporary singers would do, is check out right here. Even right there, there's like little pitch bend or a little kind of flick that happens. And it's a really cool sound that a lot of contemporary singers will use. Um, it really adds this almost kind of like modern kind of feel to it. And I really wanted to pick that apart because I think this is something you can easily incorporate into your own singing. So what's actually happening here, if we look at the melody and slow it down a tiny bit, what's actually happening is right on that note, there's a little kind of flick where I'm kind of rapidly going between two notes, right? And if I speed it fast enough, it almost becomes like a little bit of a flick. And then if you apply into the melody, it becomes this really kind of beautiful addition to a very simple melody. And so to play around with this, to find that little flick nice and slow, and then you see if you can speed it up and then apply it back to the melody. Let's jump into the verse. Guess mine is not the first heartbroken Not the first to cry. I'm not the first to know. There's just no getting over you. I know I'm just a fool who's willing. For you But baby, can't you see There's nothing else for me to do I'm hopelessly devoted to you Cool, all right. So let's break down this verse together. Now, two things that were really cool that I picked up. The first one is really being able to create this silky ending to your phrasing. Uh, what that means is, say for example, if we go to uh, over here. Uh, uh, yes. Mine, mine. When he kind of sings these phrases, there's this kind of nice kind of almost like slightly breathy kind of finishing off of the phrase. And the, and what it does with this song is it gives it this kind of really beautiful kind of finish. It's not like, guess mine, 
and you kind of just start and stop, right? There's this kind of beautiful ending to each of the phrases. And this is something that Grant does really, 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 really well. And so what's actually happening here is when you're seeing a phrase, a little idea on play around with is um, if you think about the phrase as, you know, the start, the middle, the end, you want to start relatively soft, maybe add a tiny bit more volume near the middle, but then you want to bring it back down to that kind of softer taper at the end. This is a really cool thing, right? Versus, guess mine, and then you pause, and then it starts to sound a bit abrupt. Now, for some of you who are maybe struggling to pull back the volume or taper off at the end of the phrase, one thing you really need to keep in mind is you have to get your fundamentals of the support. Because often when I find when people like, you know, going softer, they will lose their support. Guess my, and then with that, right, what happens is a lot of the tension will go to the throat. So you're gonna make sure that you're engaging your support, a really, really important fundamental. If you're struggling with your support, or maybe if you're struggling with some of these fundamentals, please check out my course, The Fundamentals of Singing down below. This is gonna make so much more sense when you go through that. And so you really wanna make sure you keep that support as you're tapering back. Guess mine. So when you pull back, you got to keep your support there. So see if you can apply that to some of your phrasing. You start soft, medium, soft, bring it back. Now, the second thing that was really cool, and this is something that adds a lot of that kind of contemporary kind of feel. If we jump over here on the word willing. Who's willing? And so what's actually happening here, if we slow it down just a bit, let's bring it down to 0.5 speed. Have a listen to what's actually happening here. Who's willing? Yeah. Now the vibrato kind of throws things off, but he's kind of going, who's willing? He's kind of going down a tiny bit of that kind of going down to that bottom note and going back up. But you know, with the right training or like when you kind of just do it so many times, you're more just kind of touching and going. It's almost like more of like an emphasis kind of effect. You're just tapping and going. And so this is another little detail you can apply. And it's so simple. You're just adding a little pitch bend to the bottom note and coming back up. Now, I think the real skill or the real challenge is doing it tastefully. And this is what I really liked about studying Grim. Uh, he adds all these little subtle touches uh, that are simple, but he does it so tastefully. And I think this is something we can all aim for versus you know going crazy with our runs and just going all over. These little things are quite tasteful. They're quite, quite, quite tasteful. So practice this one. Just go down and then back up, do a little pitch bend down and then come back up and see if you can add it into a song tastefully. All right, so let's check out the chorus here. Oops, forgot to turn off the speed. Let's check out the chorus together. What now? There's no way to hide Since you pushed my love aside I'm out of my head Hopelessly devoted to you Hopelessly devoted to you Cool. Okay. Beautiful chorus and beautiful singing once again from Grant. Um, what, are, what are some things that I picked up and some things that I can share with you all? So the first one, and I noticed with a lot of contemporary singers, they're really good at changing the vowels or relying on something called a diphthong. Now I'll give you an example here. See if you can hear what's happening on the word head. Out of my head. Head. Now rather than going head, where it's going like ed, Right. He's kind of closing it down to like an E or I vowel, like basically closing down his mouth. And the reason why I think this is really cool is for those of you who have worked with me closely and intensively, you know that this is more like a turned over sound. The sound has gone to a slightly different timbre, something that's a bit more smooth and a bit more round. And I think especially for contemporary R&B or like, you know, pop singers, they've really figured out how to use this to their advantage. Another example is right here on the word no. But now. There's no way to, there's no way to hide. On the word no, I'm gonna go no. I'm gonna really rounding out to the oval. I'm really leaning on the diphthong here, which is going from an o to an u. Right, once again, really leaning on that kind of softer quality that the uva gives. So this is something that you can easily play around with, which means when you're going through your song and you've got a word like no, like head, see if you can try closing it down to a slightly more modified version of that vowel. So now let's hop over to my favorite phrase of the song. My head, hopelessly devoted to you. 
Doesn't that just sound so good? It's like one of my favorite phrases from this song. It's just so beautiful. Uh, and it actually goes up to a G4. Uh, and the reason why I also wanted to pick out this phrase is a lot of you checking out this episode, you're probably struggling with range and these notes that are the G4 might actually be tricky for you to hit. And so I wanna share exactly what's happening here and break it down for you a bit more. So the most important thing here is you got to get your fundamentals down. You know, if you get your support in, you know how to find the ping or the focus in your sound, those two already will get you really, really close. If anything, you might actually already get there already, right? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the links in the description. I run through it in my self-study course, or if you want something a bit more personal, you can rock out with me as well. So what's actually happening here is once you've got your support, once you've got that fundamental ping, what you really want to allow for is the sound to pop up and back into your head, up and back into your head. Because if we listen to this one more time, hopelessly devoted to on that top note, and say to you, that is what we might call like a typical kind of mixed voice, right? And what's happening there, I've got my support, I have got my ping in the sound, there's a nice clear focus, but in addition, I notice the sound pops up more into my head and that allows me to not have to get into like a shouty mechanism. That's the thing that we wanna be careful of. And so when you're playing around with this, right? When you're doing an exercise or even trying to sing this phrase, see if you can aim the sound up and back and let the sound kind of pop up and back and see if that makes it easier for yourself. So let's check out verse two now and see if there's anything interesting that happens there. So. Saying, Fool, forget him. My heart is saying, Don't let go. Hold on to the end. That's what I intend to do I'm hopelessly devoted to you So beautiful verse two. Now, on top of some of the things we've already mentioned, there's plenty of these kind of little pitch bends happening, you know, really having that silky ending to his phrasing. One of the newer things that he's introduced here is if you go to here. Ooh, I'm hopelessly devoted to you. For some of you, you might be wondering like what exactly is happening there and, and how do you get them? Basically, he is singing that in a falsetto. So he's gonna switch into a lighter kind of voice, his falsetto. So he's starting off here in his normal voice. I'm... I'm, and then when he goes up to the high note, he switches into a bit of his falsetto. I'm hopelessly devoted. And then goes back to, do you, comes back to his regular voice. So there's a bit of kind of switching back and forth. So he starts off full voice on the word I'm, switches on the word hopelessly, and then comes back to his regular voice on the word to you. And this is, you know, something that can be challenging for a lot of people starting off when you're learning how to sing. But, you know, give it a try, give it a try and just practice going in and out of your falsetto. Okay, so let's wrap up with the final chorus. Now, there's no way to hide Since you pushed my love aside I'm out of my head Hopelessly devoted to you Hopelessly devoted to you Hopelessly devoted to you Very, very nice, very nice. So uh, final chorus and you know how he finishes off as well. So um, what's, what's actually happening here? And I shared this with some of our previous breakdowns. The key here, especially when you wanna sing a second chorus well, is you need to add variety. Add little, little things, little subtle details that can make it sound more interesting. Things that you don't do necessarily in the first chorus. For example. There's no way to hide. Even stuff like this. There's no way to hide. There's a little run there that happens and you don't hear this in the first one. No way to hide. Right, there's, there's none of that there, 
right? Another little detail is what he does here. Push my love aside. Side. Once again, a little, almost like a little riff, just to make things even more interesting. So um, you don't have to do this, to be honest. You don't have to always add runs, but the thing I would encourage as an exercise, when you're singing a song, challenge yourself. How can I make my second chorus more interesting? Like what are some little details? You know, Grant has chosen to add in a lot of, you know, runs, a lot of agility to make it more interesting, but there's other ways to do it as well. Maybe you change the melody or maybe you kind of hold out certain words a bit longer. That's totally cool as well. So experiment and find out what you need to do. Now, the final tip I'll share with you is learn to seize the moments of a song. Now, what I mean by this is um, when people are listening to your music, Usually what they remember is the very, very first moment you sing. So they might be like, oh, wow, this guy, you know, this guy's good or he's not good. Uh, and then they'll also check out the chorus because the chorus is where a lot of the energy gets resolved or it gets built up to. The other part is making sure you give a nice finale and really, really nice finale. And I think this is where Grant does really well in the song. If you check out how he finishes the, the song. To you. nice long sustain or nice little kind of held out note to finish off the song. And the reason why I'm sharing this is I find that a lot of people will just kind of cut off their notes and they will just won't hold that out. If you wanted to clean up your performance, right? Or if you just want to sing a song and make it sound really, really good, an important moment to seize is right at the end. And sometimes it's as simple as just holding out the note just a tiny bit longer that can leave a great impression with your audience. And so that's a wrap team. Uh, I really, really enjoyed breaking this down for you and hopefully you found value from this breakdown as well. If that is the case, all I ask is please share this episode with a friend or family so more people can learn how to sing. And if you wanna improve your voice, you wanna sing and sound better and sing some of your favorite songs, then I would really, really encourage, you to check out some of the links in the description. I've got ways on how you can work with me over Zoom or if you're more of like, you know, I want something systematic and something I can complete in my own time, check out the fundamental of singing. I've got both options sorted out for you. But the most important thing is take action. You can actually sing, you can sing really, really well. And all you need to do is decide and put in the work. Apart from that, thanks for joining me. My name is Ivan. I'm your voice teacher. And I look forward to seeing you in our next episode every single Thursday and Friday, depending where you're from. Take care.